Good morning, everybody. Today is Sunday, 19th January, 2020. Our reading of today will be taken from the first book of the Bible, Genesis. And we'll read in verse 26 from verse 12 to 17. So Genesis 26, verses 12 to 17. And it reads, <clears throat> Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And they had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah and dwelt there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, Father, you are the Lord of the harvests. We just read how Isaac sowed in the, in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Lord, we know that you are God of blessing because the word says he, that happened to him because you blessed him. So Lord, we commit our lives unto you. He did that because of obedience and because of that obedience, you blessed him and he prospered. So Lord, as we obey you, we invoke your blessing in our lives. Help us to hear your word. Let your word be that seed that is planted in us. And let us also bear a hundredfold out of all that, we, that you have planted in us. Let us not lack. Let us not be, be found wanting. Let your perfect will be done for us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So the title of the message will be Prosperity and Envy. Prosperity and Envy. It says there in verse, <coughs> sorry, in verse 14, the last bit of, of verse 14. So the Philistines envied him. That came from verse 13. And I'm reading from the King James Version, <clears throat> just for the record. So verse 13 of, of that chapter says, The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And that's why it resulted in the envy of the Philistines. So when you pray for God for, prosper for prosperity, you have to understand that envy might be some of the side effects, so to say. But we cannot, <clears throat> because of the, the wickedness or the envy of the enemy, stop to pray like John prayed in, in his third epistle. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. And I check all in Greek, and I check all in Hebrew, and all means all. You see? Beloved, children of God, I pray that you may prosper 
in all things and that you may be in good health just as your soul prospers. So you prosper physically in health and you prosper in your soul and in your spirit. You prosper in all things. That's the will of God for you and I. Because goodness comes from the Lord God, our creator, our maker, our father. But the enemy of your soul seeks to oppose those good things that God has written down concerning you and I. However we look at it, individually, as a church, as a community, as, as, the, as a nation, look around. When good things happen, you will always see people who are trying to oppose it. Those are the, 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 the devil's advocate. So don't waste your time on them. Don't go and start quarreling with them. Leave them. They are just doing their father's work. You keep on doing your own father's work. That's why Peter says, be vigilant and be wise. Don't, don't sleep because your enemy, the devil, is prowling about. He's not, he's not doing it because you are doing bad. He's looking for those who are trying to do good so he can disrupt. So, and the Bible says we have to submit ourselves to God. That's when we receive the energy, the power, the strength, the wisdom to resist the devil. And he will flee. If you haven't submitted to God, you cannot resist the enemy. Then you are fighting him by your power. But when you have submitted to God, you tap into God, you are plucked into God, then God is the one that strengthens you to resist the enemy. So you cannot fear him. Fear him not. Just submit yourself to God, your, your master, your father, your creator. When we submit to the will of God, he will bring it to pass. Don't look back like Lot's wife. Just do what you know to do. Let the enemy do what he knows to do. Jesus says he's... He's the liar. He's the father of all lies. And Jesus rejoiced. He said, I saw him fall like lightning from heaven. So don't even bother. He's just doing what he has to do. You should focus and, and, and do what you know to do as well. Because your line and his line are parallel. You don't meet. He does his thing. You do your own. And Jesus is in the middle. And he's watching. Jesus has already overcome him. So whatever you face, remember you have already won. Amen? Uh -huh. So let's look at that chapter 26 as a whole. Let's starting from verse 1. Because we only read from, <coughs> from verse 12 to 17. But let's look at, at it from verse 1. Verse 1 says, there was a famine in the land. That's how it starts. It's like a whammy. It's like a bombshell. There was, there was a famine in the land. So you know already you are facing a dare situation. And if you just connect that verse 1 to verse 12 that we read, in one sentence, you can read it as, there was a famine, a famine in the land, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed it. So did the famine stop Isaac from sowing? No. That's what I'm saying. Don't focus on the negative. There was a famine in the land, beginning of verse 1. And then in one sentence, then Isaac sowed in that land, that same land. Not a different land. 
in obedience, in submission to the word of God. So it depends on us what or who we choose to listen to. What, what do we choose to, to see? What do we choose to look at? Who do we choose to look at? Who do we choose to listen to? What do we choose to listen to? Or to read even? Or to watch even? All the negative messages on, on TV or God's word? So the news flash on TV says, there is famine in the land. And you start to panic. Instead of running to God and say, okay, God, what do you say about this? So Isaac listened to the news flash. There is famine in the land. Besides the first that was in the days of Abraham. So this is a second round of famine. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerah. So he, he, he tried to do what he thought was best. And then he stopped. Okay, what's God saying about this? There's famine in the land. Lord, what do you say? Listen to verse 2. Then the Lord appeared to him. The Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Ignore the news flash. Ignore the, the breaking news. Just listen to what I'm saying and do that. God appeared to him. Don't go to Egypt. Everybody's running to Egypt. That's the, 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 the world system. That's the world order. That's what everybody thinks is good. Don't go to Egypt. Even though it looks like Egypt is the happening place. Don't go there. Let God be your prosperity. Let your prosperity not depend on the world system. The, everyone is running in one direction. You stop and say, Lord, which way shall I go? Don't go there because everyone is going there. It may look like it's the real deal. How be it? Sooner or later, you start to pay back. You will pay back. If God did not give it to you, you... That means Satan gave it to you, and he'll take it back. Because that's his, his, uh, 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 his business. That's what he's good at. You, you do what God says, even though it doesn't look right. That's the point. Verse 3, God says, dwell in this land. And I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands. And I will perform. I will perform. I will bring it to pass. I'll perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Don't look at what is happening. If Satan gives you, he'll take it back. Just ignore him. Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. That's why God stay, said, dwell, dwell in this land. Don't, don't let the news flash bother you. And so that brings us to that position of having a choice whether to obey God's voice or to leave it. Do we want to accept what God says, even though it doesn't look right? Even though all your friends have run to Egypt? God says, stay here. Oh, but Lord, everybody's going to Egypt. Okay, choose where you want to go. 
God says, I will do it. I'll bring it to pass. Because I've given my word to your father Abraham. And he has obeyed me before. So it's, it's an issue of trust. Listen to verse, verse 5. Because God says, okay, we just read verse 3. Verse 4 says, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. So he's reiterating his promise to Abraham, the oath he swore to Abraham. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So God did not hide his plan from him, but it depended on him to obey or not to obey. And God reminds him in verse 5, because Abraham did what? Obeyed. That's what it says. Genesis 26 verse 5. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. That's the only way you prosper. It's not what you see with your eyes. I'm going to fulfill, perform the oath that I swore to Abraham because he obeyed my voice. He kept my charge. He kept my commandments. He kept my statutes. He kept my laws. And verse 6 is very, very short. So, Isaac dwelt in Gera. A simple decision of trust and obedience. Because God is saying, your father went through this. If you read Genesis chapter 20. Your father went through this, Isaac. Your father, Abraham, went through this. In Genesis 20, I saw him through. Will you let me see you through this time? This is a second time, if you remember what we read in verse 1. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine. So this is not the first time. You have track record of God's faithfulness. Especially for us in this generation. We have so much Evidence, how God has helped others. What is our problem? Because for Isaac, that wasn't a big problem. Verse 6 is the shortest of all the verses in that chapter. So, Isaac dwelt in Gera. Simple choice to make. Simple choice of obedience and trust. That was his response to what God said to him. I saw your father through. It's up to you if you want to let me see you through. There was famine before. Your father obeyed my voice. And I pulled him out of it. Now it's your turn. Will you let me help you? And Isaac responded. And we still go back to that verse 12. It was his respond in verse 6. That brought about verse 12. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land, while others ran. Isaac dwelt in Gera. So just read verse 6 and verse 12 in one sentence. So Isaac dwelt in Gera. Then he sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And what I like most in, in all those verses is verse 18. I just love it. See how because he obeyed and stayed and planted because God blessed him, he says the man began to prosper. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Read verse 18 for yourself. That's what it says. Because he obeyed and remained. 
the man began to prosper. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And that's why the enemy could not understand. Why did we run to Egypt and suffer while this man stayed in the dry land and ripped a hundredfold in one year? So verse 14 says, so because he continued prospering and became very prosperous, for he had many possessions, so it was obvious. It wasn't something he had to tell anybody. For he had many possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. You envy me because I obey God's word. God is saying the same thing to you. Why don't you just obey and, and see? They envied him because he was prosperous. Because of his prosperity due to obedience, due to his trust in God, his faith in God, his belief in God, the Philistines envied him. And that's what you call enemies of progress, enemies of prosperity. They are everywhere. So don't think that you are just reading this. It's everywhere. So look around you. When, when God is telling you to do something, a hundred other voices, voices will tell you, ah, that, that looks a bit dumb. Look around you. See what others are doing. So you have to choose which voice you want to hear. And when you, you stick it through, before you know, those people start to hate you. They end with him. Verse 15. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And they had filled them up with earth or with sand. That, that's, that's what the enemy does. Enemy of progress. The thing that you want to use to, 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 to feed or to uh, uh, um, let, you know, to, uh, it, it, the, the well, the well will, will, will bring water for your Animals, like he says, he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a number, a great number of servants. So from the well, you take the water to sustain. The enemy had to go and stop the well. It's like, if I can't have it, then no one else should have it. They won't use it. And they will also not want you to use it. That's the attitude of the enemy. And even King Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we are. You, you, are, you are too rich for us. You are too prosperous for us. Go away. Go away from us. And then you start crying. Oh, I'm losing my friends. Oh, everybody hates me. No, please go. Because it's for your own good. Those people are not your friends. They stopped your well. They envy you. They drive you away and you are crying. When God wants to bless you, he has to clear, clear those unwanted plants around you. Anything that is not helping you to grow, cut it off. Jesus said it, every tree that my heavenly father did not plant will be uprooted. God is cutting off those weeds around you and you are sitting around and crying. Oh, I'm losing friends. Oh, everybody hates me. They don't, there's just envy and God is trying to protect you.
Here is King Abimelech saying to Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier. You are greater than us. You are richer than us. Isaac wasn't dumb. His father trained him well. He was an obedient child. He heard the voice of God. What does he do in verse 17? Then Isaac departed. They said, go away. We don't want you. He departed. Where did he go? He departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerah. So in the same region, but he went to the valley and dwelled there. Why valley? Time for him to stay away from people and listen more to God. Wilderness times, valley times, that's time for meditation. Don't sit around and cry. Go and seek a nice little corner for yourself and start to listen to the voice of God. Okay, Lord, you, you, you blessed me and these people hate me. Okay, now tell me how I can get richer. If they are envious of this little one, this hundredfold in this one year, and they are so envious, Lord, I want to know how to get richer. That's your time to, to seek God more because he has cut off those weeds around you. He separated you. Now you are alone. Now you can hear him better. Meditate on his word. He pitched his tent in the valley. That was time he was one on one with God, seek, seeking God's face. And then he started digging. He started digging. Because he was focused. Isaac became focused. He did not allow the lies of his enemies of progress to interfere with what God had said to him. He quietly left that spot and went and pitched his tent where he could hear God better. Time to shut out the enemy and meditate on the word of God. Time to stay focused and not cry. And then he started digging the wells again. Let's read verse 18. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. What does that mean to you and I? That spiritual heritage. You, you, you read in in um, Hebrew when it talks of the, the cloud of witnesses. That's why I keep saying our generation is the best. See, Isaac only had one man to, to copy. He only had his father's spiritual heritage to go back to. He went back to dig the wells. That's what it means. He went back to trace his father's footsteps. And how many footsteps do we have to trace? Even just... Apart from Jesus on a loan, that is more than enough. We have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. I mean, who do you want to name? Peter, Paul, Deborah, Esther. Who do you want to name? Uncountable. That's why the Bible says you have a cloud of witnesses. People who have been there, done that, and are wearing the crown. Go back and dig the wells, the old wells. Redig the wells. Visit your spiritual heritage. 
Where did I stop? He didn't just go and do his own thing because the Bible says he called the world by the same name which his father had called them. He did not deviate. He did not say new age. This is new generation. Let's do something new. We don't know what that old man was doing. Now we are the modern generation. Let's do our thing. Verse 19. And also Isaac's servant dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. So th that's breakthrough. When you revisit your spiritual heritage, we hear of revivals, the Welsh revival, and all that the great saints did. Ask yourself, what did they do that I'm not doing? What am I missing? These ones dug the well again and found running water. It wasn't stagnant water. They went back to the old, the real thing that had substance. And they found running water. That means, like we sang just a few minutes ago, even when you don't see it, even when you don't feel it, God is always working. The river of God is always running. If only you go back and redig it. If only you don't allow the world system to confuse you. Are you going to allow the enemy of prosperity to stop your spiritual progress? This is the season to redig the wells. Call for the, those physical and spiritual prosperity that the Lord has written down concerning you and your destiny. Prosperity will cause envy to come out of their dark places. But do not let envy cause you to lose focus and miss out on your prosperity. Go back and redeem the well. You won't just find standing water, you will find running water. That's exactly what Paul prayed that I said at the beginning. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Physically, spiritually, otherwise. Just redig the wells. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to cause the fountain of life to flow in your circumstance. Keep digging because the enemy of your soul is not sleeping. So you too should not sleep. They are not sleeping. Why, why are you sleeping? Listen to verse 20. But the herdsmen of Gera quarreled with Isaac's headsman, saying, the water is ours. The water is not yours. Abraham, my father, dug it. But Isaac did not bother to quarrel with them. He said he named it Essek, which means quarrel or, 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 or strive. Different, you know, or contention, because this, this is opposition, quarrel, contention, strife. They came to quarrel with him. That's our water. And then, verse 21, they dug another well. They stepped away from them. Dug another well. See, they, they didn't stop. Your enemy is not stopping, so why are you stopping? Keep going. Don't be Lot's wife and look back. They dug another well 
And they quarreled over that one as well. And so he called it Sitna. And Sitna just means an enmity. They just want you to fall. They don't want your progress. Verse 22. And he moved from there and dug yet another well. And they did not quarrel over it. See? Persistence. This time they realized I can't beat them. They did not quarrel over this one. So he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. Because of his persistence, God rewarded him. He was persistent. He would not stop. He kept digging. And by this time, God says, that's my boy. I can see your zeal. And Rehoboth means broad place. Spacious place, that, just like he says there. God had made room. He gave us space to prosper. You see, they were, they were envious of, of your hundredfold in, in one year. What, what is God doing? Creating more space. Why? Because you went to the valley to seek his face. And you did not stop. You did not stop seeking him. For now... The Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. In that same land. Then he went up from there to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Lord God of your father Abraham. Do not fear. For I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So God is even going back to say, because your dad obeyed me, because your dad stuck it out with me, I honored him, and for his sake, I'm going to honor you. So he built an altar there and called on, this, on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there. And there, Isaac's servant dug a well. They dug yet another well. They, they don't stop. Don't stop revisiting your spiritual heritage. The Bible is there. From Genesis to, Gen to Revelation, you've not finished reading it. When you, your friends hate you and, and push you away, go and revisit where you stopped in the Bible. It's because you stopped digging the wells. That's why you are looking at them. If you, if you had kept digging the world, you wouldn't even bother about them. There's your example here in Isaac. So once he broke through, the Lord appeared to him. That's in verse 24. Isaac built an altar and worshipped God. This is the manifestation of of your prayers, the manifestation of your, of your fasting, the manifestation of your meditating on the word of God, the manifestation of all those times that the haters would not leave you alone. God appeared to you. And now you can worship him. And his servants dug yet another well, And that's why he says, Lord, I can see that you are a faithful God. So he called it Sheba. That's the name of that one. Because on that same day, if you, if you read on, on that same day that his servants found, you know, dug this well, what happens? 
the enemy started coming back. They, they realized we can't beat this guy. He, he, he has prospered, he's prospering, and he's becoming more. The more we hate him, the richer he gets. So why don't we just stop hating him? Some do that, some never do that. Listen to verse 26. Then Abimelech, the same man that told him, go away, you are too much for us. Abimelech came to him from Gaza and um, Ahazad, one of his friends. So he brought, you know, companion and pitch called the commander of his army. He, they came to Isaac. So Isaac is like, why have you come to me? Read verse 27. Isaac said to them, why have you come to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? What are you coming back to do now? You, you, you obviously hate me. Why did you come to me? In verse 28, they said, we have clearly seen it is certain, we have seen that the Lord is with you. We fought you so long and, you know, there's nothing we can do. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you. Suddenly, peace treaty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, they want to come back and call it, quits. Let's not fight again. We've come back. We want a peace treaty. Let us make an oath. Why? Listen to verse 29. That you will do us no harm. Now they're afraid of you. They are afraid of you. Because you are unstoppable. And it is clear to see. Let's make an oath. Let us sign a peace treaty that you will not harm us. Verse 29. Since we have not touched you. Now they are trying to say, you see, we just sent you away before. We didn't fight you. We just asked you to go. Since we have not touched you and since we have done nothing to you, but good, and have sent you away in peace. You see, now they are trying to make it look as if it was all, we, we did you good, we, we sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. May the enemy declare with his mouth that you are blessed by the Lord in Jesus' name. You are now the blessed of the Lord. If the enemy says it, then it's true. It's, it has to be true. And so, verse 30, so Isaac made them a feast. Of course, he was a rich man. He made them a feast, and they ate and drank. The lesson there, do not begrudge your enemies. Leave them alone. They can see you are rich. They are coming to beg for food. Just give them food. Don't begrudge them. Forgive them. Because you are mightier than them. Forgive them. Don't begrudge them. If you read Psalm 130 verse 4, it says to the Lord, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. It, it is the fear. Your, your dread, your fear has fallen on them. And they know that if you want to crush them out, you'll crush them out. So they are coming to beg. Just forgive them. Let the Lord judge them. Act like your father in heaven. There is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Forgive them that they might know that you are truly greater and mightier than they are. Let the fear of you fall on them. Give them food to eat. Throw a party for them. Don't quarrel with them. Give them, bless them. Because when you do this, the blessing and protection of God 
will remain on you. Verse 30, he met them a feast, and they ate and drank. Then they arose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. Verse 32, it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servant came and told him about the well which they had dug. That's the one we read in verse 25. So they, they found the well. So on this day now that the enemies came for the peace treaty, the servant came and told Isaac about the well which they had dug. And said to him, we have found water. So the, see the, the glory of God, the presence of God, the peace of God is everywhere around you. Why bother with the enemy? Waste of time. So verse 33, so he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. They found fresh water. Sheba just means oath or seven. Some people say seven wells or the wells of oath. Because um, of, you know, the Hebrew word is extensive. You can call it oath, you can call it seven well of oath or, or well of the seven. Seven itself, because its completion is also an oath in itself. So the servant came and said to him, we have found water. So this is your constant refreshment. This is your constant presence of the Lord. He comes to bless you. He, God has no, no evil plan against you. He says, my plans for you are good and not evil. So when bad things happen to you, never blame God. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Blame him no more. He only comes to strengthen you. He co only comes to, to bless you. He only comes that you may find strength. Remember when you're, when, like, when it's like in summer, and you are tired and, and weary. All you, you, if they gave you food that time, you don't even want. All you want is water to drink, something to drink, because it's refreshing. It, it strengthens you. It revamps your strength. It, it brings you back to life. So this is what the, 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 the work. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, refreshing strength in the Holy Ghost. We found water running water. And that is what God is saying to you today. Seek me and find running water. Don't look at the envy of the enemy when I prosper you. Prosperity will bring envy, but don't look at it. Focus on me. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word, this very refreshing word, this word that is here to strengthen, to guide, to, to redirect our footsteps, to make us think again, where did I live my, my spiritual uh, uh, life off? When did I stop going back to my spiritual heritage? Holy Spirit, re redirect us today. Help us to, to find, or, or help us to find those, those spiritual heritage. Go back and dig. Give us that breakthrough. Let us find water when we dig. And let it be fresh water, refreshing water. Water that gives us strength in your name, Jesus. And Lord, we pray, may it please you, O Lord, to show us where to dig, to help us stay focused so that we may find that place where that fresh water flows. 
because it is in that that we will be fruitful. Our lives will be fresh and we will continue to prosper in you. Let our prosperity be from you, O Lord God of hosts. We thank you for this word. We bless your name. We come against every spirit of fear. We come against every spirit of rejection. Every orphan spirit, we destroy you right now in the name of Jesus. And we embrace our Father. He says, when your father and your mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. So, Lord, we embrace you. That we will not listen or, or condone the fear of the enemy. There are words that are there to put fear in us. That Those words of rejection go away from us. They only say that because you are too much for them. For that help us to to be focused on you, to see that it's because we are greater than them. That's why they don't know what to do with us. Help us in those times to focus more on you so that we won't just be prosperous. We will continue to prosper and become very prosperous for your glory and for our good. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen.